Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. Our guest today is Dr. Carolyn Dean. She's not only an MD, she's an ND as well. That means she's a naturopath. She's the author of 27 books. The one we're going to focus on is The Magnesium Miracle, Discovering the Missing Link to Total Health. This book talks about lowering your risk of heart disease, preventing strokes and obesity, treating diabetes, and improving mood and memory. Now, Dr. Dean is the medical director of the Nutritional Magnesium Association. She's also the president of the Hallmark Dean Academy, U.S., and Hallmark Dean Laboratory, and she works closely with Dana Hallmark, inventor of the unique functional computerized urinalysis lab test. Dr. Dean and Ms. Hallmark teach laboratory technician, wellness counselor, and certified naturopathic courses in their licensed school. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Dr. Carolyn Dean to its rainmaking time. Good evening. Aloha. Aloha, Kim. Thank you very much. And I have to say, though, that the Hallmark Dean um, uh, lab, etc., that's been put on hold. When I moved to Maui, I could no longer keep up with those commitments. I welcome the correction and the update. I really want to applaud your work with magnesium because apparently people that have never even thought about the contribution of this unique element are getting a lot of help from it. Now, many naturopaths say they don't like to fractionalize supplementing, Uh, mm -hmm. but there's something miraculous about magnesium. I want you to first share why you focus so much on this mineral. Yes, and, and that's an interesting point. I hadn't thought of it uh, recently that about fractionalizing supplements. I mean, a naturopath would say, well, if you eat, um, eat your vegetables and maybe do some juicing, etc., then you'll get your nutrients. But um, what I found out about this particular mineral is that it's, it's pretty much been farmed out of the soil. And even if it is in the soil and happens to get into the plants, it's uh, easily cooked or processed out of the the end product. So, in fact, up to 80% of the whole population is not even getting the RDA of magnesium. And it's important because it helps the functioning of over 325 different enzyme systems in the body. And those have to do with just a myriad of, of um, processes in the body that may be affecting our ability to digest our food and process our food, synthesizing protein, transmitting nerve signals, relaxing muscles, and producing and transporting energy. So if you're low in energy, you could be low in magnesium. If your muscles don't seem strong enough, you could be low in protein. If you have any sort of muscle twitching or or nerve irritation, it could be a magnesium deficiency. So it is so important. And until I wrote the book and started getting massive response to it by people reading it and then taking magnesium and having benefits, I mean, I, I myself didn't realize how very important it was. Now, fluoride in the water gets rid of magnesium or ruins it. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. It kind of antidotes it so that if you're drinking fluoridated water, that will be pushing out your magnesium. Why do you say in the book that calcium has been a major distraction? I want you to explain that. Mm. Well, um, when medicine got a hold of the fact that uh, women were getting osteoporosis, they decided that the treatment of osteoporosis was high intake of calcium. And, you know, kind of makes sense. Your bones are, are a good proportion of them is made up of calcium, but they didn't realize that the form of calcium that they were recommending was actually a form that's only about 4% absorbed. So the other 96% of that calcium pill that you're taking goes into your intestines and clogs them up. And what happens further to that is a lot of that calcium can actually precipitate in tissues and cause kidney stones, gallstones, heel spurs, and even calcification of breast cysts. 
And then that calcification is often looked upon as a, as a precursor to breast cancer. So there's so many reasons why high doses of calcium are, are not good for us. On the other hand, when you look at magnesium, it's the mineral that kind of balances out calcium. They work together. Calcium tightens things up and magnesium relaxes them. If you have too much calcium, your muscles tighten up. And if you have enough magnesium um, in relationship to calcium, the muscles are, are, you know, relaxed and normal. So you get a situation where you have too much calcium, you have the heart, which is one big muscle, and that muscle can go into spasm, which is a heart attack. I just interviewed Dr. Peter Glidden, who wrote the book, The MD Emperor Has No Clothes, Mm -hmm. the other day. He's also a naturopath. And one of the things he said was that we need calcium in order to make stomach acid. In your book, you say that stomach acid is essential for magnesium absorption. So I can see how they go together. Oh, yes, they do. And it's like you said at the beginning, don't isolate things. Because if you just focus on calcium, as the doctors have done, and get everybody on a calcium prescription, but don't tell them about magnesium or even boron or vitamin D or the other Uh, nutrients necessary for bone, you create an imbalance. You actually create brittle bone. And the same can go for magnesium, I guess, except in the case of magnesium where um, there's an excess of it in what you're taking, you'll actually get a laxative effect that flushes out that excess magnesium. So there really isn't a threat of getting too much or getting an overload in the body. So it's really a very safe mineral for a person to work with. And what I actually tell most people is that if they get enough deep leaf, um, deep green leafy vegetables and uh, maybe some yogurt, dairy products, nuts and seeds, they can get most of their calcium needs right in their diet if they pay attention. And then magnesium, they can get a bit extra by taking Epsom salts baths or some magnesium citrate powders that they can stir into into water. And then if, if they have uh, mag- real magnesium deficiency symptoms, they could take magnesium supplements. This comes to another very confusing part, at least for me. I'm sure that people in the audience listening have been confused about the different types of magnesium to take. And I know you mentioned it in the book, the magnesium miracle. But for example, another guest that I had interviewed sent me the ancient minerals, the magnesium oil. Mm. And as I shared with you, I sprayed it on my skin and it itched too much. And I know that a lot of people, in order to get that spray on the skin, they dilute it. Mm -hmm. But is there any easier way to do it? Oh, yes. I mean, that some people that doesn't bother them at all. But what I must say is, Uh, spraying magnesium on the skin is is like going in the ocean and leaving the salt water on your skin. It kind of just sort of dries and can be itchy and a bit irritating. What um, some people would do is just spray it on and um, 20, 30 minutes later, just wash it off, take a quick shower, because after about 30 minutes, um, what's going to be absorbed is already absorbed. Or you can get forms of magnesium to put on topically that are magnesium creams or gels. You can take Epsom salts baths. That's what I do is take a, a bath with some clay and uh, for detoxing and uh, with about two cups of uh, Epsom salts every day. And that's my kind of morning spa routine. And then the oral forms, the magnesium citrate powders in water, are the, the most common, commonly found in health food stores where there are ca- different forms of capsules. Uh, for people that can't take oral magnesium without getting the laxative effect, there's even a form called angstrom magnesium, A-N-G-S-T-R-O-M, and that claims to be 100% absorbed because it's, it's broken down to such a tiny size that it's um, absorbed directly into the, the cells of the body where it's needed. And I know myself, um, that's the oral form that I use, and it's never given me the laxative effect. 
How do we order it? Where do we get it? 